So how much does it cost to live in Bozeman? That's a great question, and we're gonna dive into those numbers in this video. So before we get started, some of these numbers are coming from bestplaces.net. They have a cost of living index that's based on the national average. And how that works is a score of 100 is the US national average. So if it's below 100, it means it's cheaper than the US average, and above 100 means that it's more expensive. Now let's jump into these numbers and make sure you watch until the end because that might be the most important part of this video. Overall, Bozeman's affordability index is 121.6. So what that means is that it costs 21.6% more to live in Bozeman than the US average. So let's break it down by category and jump into what's more expensive, what's less expensive, and how it all shakes out in Bozeman. So the cost of healthcare in Bozeman comes in at a 103.3 on the cost of living index. So it's 3.3% above the national average. Now this number for the cost of healthcare is calculated using the daily rate for hospital rooms, the cost of a doctor's visit and a dental checkup and stuff like that. The average cost of healthcare is calculated using the standard daily rate for a hospital room, the cost of a doctor's office visit and dental checkups and stuff like that. So if you're living in Bozeman, you can expect the cost of healthcare to be a little bit above the national average. Another cost of living expense is gasoline. Now gas is currently at 309 per gallon for regular in Bozeman, and this includes a 32.5% state tax, which is just a hair higher than the national average, but quite a bit less than states like California and Washington that have gas taxes of over 50 cents a gallon. Food is another thing that goes into your cost of living, and for good reason, everybody's gotta eat. So according to thebestplaces.net, for food and groceries, not including restaurants, Bozeman is 7.6% higher than the national average. So if you're gonna be living in Bozeman, expect to pay just a little bit more than the national average for your food and groceries, but we do have competition coming into the area that's gonna drive those prices down. So we just had a Winco open up, which is a great option for buying affordable groceries and saving a little bit of money every month as you purchase your food and groceries. And we also have a Whole Foods coming into the area that will open in the future. And just more competition always brings cheaper prices. So if you already have kids or are planning to have children in the future, the cost of childcare is a major expense when you talk about the cost of living. So according to the worldpopulationreview.com, the average cost of providing center-based care for an infant in the United States is $1,230 per month. That's $14,000 per year. Montana ranks 19th as a state at $793 per month, but Bozeman's gonna be a little bit more than the state average just because it's more expensive to live here. And many of the facilities are over $1,000 a month. Several of the childcare facilities are also on a wait list. So you wanna plan ahead. And I personally know people that the day they find out they're pregnant, they're getting on the wait list for their favorite facility. Now, if your kids are a little bit older, once they get out of school for the summer, most likely you're gonna have to do something with them. There's several good options in summer camps in here. There's sports specific ones but two of my favorites are Camp Agape, which is about $120 per week, and the YMCA, which is $235 a week for non-members. There's a lot more options than that. There's some football specific ones especially, but there are stuff and there are options for you if you have kids in the summer and you need to put them in summer camp. Now let's talk about taxes. I'm sure this is your favorite subject. Montana is actually just one of five states that doesn't have a sales tax. There are some sales taxes though. So on touristy items like 8% on hotels or 4% on rental cars, there is a state tax. But outside of that, there's really not. So when you're buying groceries, when you're buying clothing, when you're buying a car, Montana doesn't have a sales tax. So it's a really good environment for spending money. Now this kind of goes back to buying food. So when you're shopping for groceries, the average cost is you know, a little bit higher than the national average, but you're not adding a sales tax on top of that. So it makes it more affordable than it sounded a little bit earlier in the video. So that definitely helps us out. Montana does have a bracketed state income tax though. So it's in between 1% to 6.9% depending on your annual income. Kind of puts us in the middle of the pack. It's, it's not the cheapest, you know, it's not like Alaska or Wyoming or Florida but it's also you know, not nearly as high as like New York or Pennsylvania or California or anything like that. So it's definitely something that is pros and cons to it, but if you're living here, you don't have to pay a sales tax, which everybody loves. The caveat to that though is 
Bozeman is a big hub for tourism. So when the tourists come here, they're not paying a sales tax either, which is kind of a bummer. I wish we could just tax the tourists. That would be amazing, but we don't. So they're exploring ways on that. They've talked about having sales taxes in, in markets like Bozeman for, you know, to capture that tourism dollars. But as of right now, most of our tax money comes out of the state income tax and also property taxes. So when we talk about property taxes in Montana, it's important to know that Montana is a non-disclosure state. What that means is what you paid for your house isn't public and the government doesn't have access to that. Now, when you buy your home, you're gonna get an official looking document in the mail and that's the county asking you how much you paid for your house. You don't have to fill that out and I actually recommend that you don't. I didn't when I bought my house, it's none of their business. So how they determine your taxable value is that every two years, they're gonna do a new assessment on your taxes and they're gonna come up with your taxable value. Now, historically, this has been below the actual market value of your home. So you're not getting taxed on that whole value on what you could sell your house for today, which is kind of nice. So on average, it comes out to about 0.8% as your property tax compared to your home value. The national average is 1.07%. So we're actually, as a county and in Bozeman, less than you would spend on the national average. Now everybody here is gonna complain that property taxes are too high, and I don't disagree with them, but we are below the national average and that's definitely gonna help you out. Now when they calculate the value of your home for taxes, there isn't a limit on the assessment. So it can go up as much as they feel necessary, but there is a limit on the rate and there is a limit on the levy to stop property taxes from getting out of control. So it shouldn't skyrocket on you from one year to another. So if you're living in Bozeman, if you're in city limits, it's going to be a little bit more expensive for your property tax than if you live out in the county. And if you start to go to the outskirts like Belgrade or Manhattan or Three Forks, it's definitely going to be less property tax burden on you as you buy your house, not to mention that the cost of housing is going to be cheaper as well. Now let's talk about housing. This is one of the largest factors of the cost of living. All around the country, prices are skyrocketing. This is obviously a big frustration for home buyers, and I'm actually looking to buy my house right now too, so I get it. Buyer demand is through the roof and supply is nowhere near keeping up. That means that housing is getting more expensive. Currently in Bozeman city limits, the median sales price for a single family home is $720,000. Unfortunately, this is putting a large strain on local residents who are getting priced out of the housing market. That 720 number though, that includes all single family houses, large and small. It includes the historic district in downtown and a wide range of price points. So if we look at houses under 2000 square feet, that number drops to 600,000. And if we look north of Main Street and west of 19th, that number's down to 565,000, which begins to look a little bit more manageable. And of course, if you're looking for a townhouse or condo, that's gonna be more affordable and you can pick those up with a median sales price in the mid 400s. If you're open to the idea of outside the city of Bozeman and are going to the outlying areas like Belgrade, you'll find more options at a lower price point. The median sales price for single family home in Belgrade is $542,000. That's $178,000 cheaper than Bozeman. And if we look at single family houses under 2,000 square feet, in Belgrade, the median price is down to $474,000. The price difference is driving people to Belgrade and it's a great option to save money on housing versus Bozeman. Condos and townhouses are a lot cheaper in Belgrade too and have a median price in the mid 300s. Now, of course, these are all median numbers. So there's gonna be houses that are more expensive and less expensive. And if you're willing to buy something that needs a little bit of work, you're probably gonna be able to get a better deal as well. So if you have any questions about living in Bozeman, make sure to put it in the comments. And if you notice we forgot to turn on our light on the bookshelf, go ahead and put that down there too. Remind us to turn on the light next time. And if you're buying in the Bozeman area, we'd love to help you out. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one.